Yes, it's true. Alan Moore, he didn't write the original Star Wars movies, obviously, but he did write Star Wars comics in the 1980s, early 1980s, before his work on famous stuff like Swamp Thing, V for Vendetta, Watchmen, From Hell, before any of that, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, before all that, he did some early work. These were published in a British Marvel Weekly, I think called Empire Strikes Back Weekly or something. Anyways, they're very short stories, like five to eight pages each, and they were reprinted in the 1990s by Dark Horse Comics under the title Star Wars Devil Worlds, and the first issue has some stories by other guys too, but the second issue is all more. So I looked at these five short stories to see if they're worth your time, if they're if they're important at all, if you care about Star Wars. I don't really care too much about Star Wars, but um, you know, I've seen, I saw the original movies and so on. And I, I was into them as a kid and stuff like that, but now I just kind of like whatever. I wanted to see if they were interesting stories. So let's take a look at each of them now. The first story is called Dark Lord's Conscience, in which Darth Vader is on some planet playing some kind of game like chess, but not chess, against this alien woman with tentacles, while some dude is coming to kill him, to kill him with guilt. But little does he know that Darth Vader has no guilt. The style of writing is kind of reminiscent of Swamp Thing era more, in which the description balloons can be a little too maudlin, very melodramatic, very full of poesy. Uh, here's an example. Outside the hive palace of Lady Doll, there is slashing rain and wind that moans like a widow. Ah! Needless to say, since none of these stories is really allowed to affect any of the characters in any major way, Darth Vader walks away from the encounter unscathed. Next, in blind fury, Luke Skywalker heeds the call of some guy that wants to kill Jedis or something. There's some really heavy exposition going on in the beginning, like Maybe this story is connected to some other comic uh, story in this, this title, but I don't care. Anyways, great introduction of Luke Skywalker. Listen to this. See him, Luke Skywalker, the new boy in hell. But my favorite panel is this one. Behold, the vengeful remains of Roar, high shaman of the terrible glare. Oh, this one is just five pages. And it's incredible to see how Moore tries to pack some Kind of emotion into these five pages but for my part these stories are these yeah they're pretty they're completely disposable next up russ never sleeps probably the only neil young <laughs> title used in the star wars story alan davis one of the great superhero comic artists did the art but i have to say that i found it pretty unremarkable i think this was pretty early in his career too and the story zooms in on a junkyard planet for droids in which c-3po and rtd2 attempt to foment a rebellion. <laughs> Again, Moore tries to stir up some feeling for the characters that are only going to be there for a few pages before they vanish into oblivion, and you forget about these stories entirely. Next up, the Pandora effect, in which Han, Chewie, and Leia are ensnared by some wizard types. This one really reminded me of like Dungeons and Dragons. I think that was kind of the the feel of it that Moore was going for. Along the way, they release a powerful alien demon and revenge happens. I feel like something like this happened in one of his Superman stories, but I don't remember which. I think it's a common thing for Moore to have these really prideful characters suddenly realize that they're not the most powerful people in the room and suddenly be humbled or destroyed. And that happens a lot in Moore and it happens here. The art in this one, the characters look the least like the characters look at Han here, look at Leia's face, and look at how Chewie looks like not a Wookiee but a Yeti. <laughs> we conclude with Talatni throws a shape in which these ultra powerful godlike beings, real you know, like the the main characters in this are like Leia and some stormtroopers. They kind of realize that they're just chess pieces in in the games of these gods that are. Uh, these ultra powerful beings and so on. This one reminded me a little of uh, a story in his short story collection, Illuminations. And as a five pager, this could have spelt the doom of Princess Leia, but unsurprisingly it didn't. So that's it. I just feel like these stories are not that important. If you are a big Moore fan, I think you can hold off and read a lot of other things before you get to these and only get to these. If you really want to see his early, early stories and see kind of how he was developing as a writer. This was probably the biggest audience he had been 
exposed to at this point in his career because you know this is a major franchise to be working on this so that is kind of significant but in terms of the stories i think they're very disposable you can discard them and i will probably forget them very quickly but you're unlikely to see more work on a you know a corporate hollywood franchise like this again if you want to see me talk more about alan moore be sure you check out my videos that i did on from hell illuminations and jerusalem links down below in the video and subscribe and all that etc bye